Yo, yo, yo. Welcome back to the channel. I want to open with a, uh, I, j I just want to talk about the truth about two guys uh, that have been in the AMC community, you know? You know, people have a lot to say, especially about about one of them, you know. But uh, I just wanted to briefly talk about Rico, Rico's trade on on YouTube and, and Twitter, and um and trading with emotions. Uh, it's gonna be brief. I just want I just want to let everybody know the truth about those guys. The truth is, yesterday we played Warzone together, and I absolutely carried them. Now we didn't get any wins. But it was because they were weighing me down the entire time. And you can ask them. They'll tell you it's true. Anyway, uh, let's, uh, let's jump right into such... <laughs> oh, I mean, it's kind of true. But yeah, I'm, I'm obviously trolling, but it's kind of true. Let's get in the chart. AMC, uh, talk about what's going on. Obviously, there's a bunch of crazy stuff going on in the market, the broader market. We'll just talk about that as well briefly. Um... I want to break down a spy trade, uh, dude. So I was so aggravated with myself earlier. Like I literally like had to get out of the house, go to the gym and like not talk to anybody for a little while, even before, uh, market, uh, market closed. I was just like so aggravated with myself. So I was like, I gotta go to the gym, dude. So <clears throat> let's just talk about spy right quick. Uh, just, just this little trade situation that I, that I went through. Because it's a great story, and a lot of people, you, you love failure. You love to see failure, right? So uh, so that's what I'm going to give you here, all right? So if you're following me on Twitter, um, I tweeted pretty early in market that we should see a reversal here. We literally bounced. I mean, I you know, you guys, you guys are going to say, oh, he's just saying that, um, y you know, and he's saying he's always right, but he's always wrong, and he says, he says this or that, you know? Um, I, look, I tweeted out, think bounce coming right here. Boom. All right. Oh my, oh, I still have my marker. Let me turn my, uh, let me make the numbers bigger. And I got to remember to do it for the other chart too. Most of the time I chart on mobile. So <clears throat> whenever I chart on mobile, obviously it benefits me more to have the numbers smaller because it's a smaller screen automatically switches over. Trading view. Are you listening? Um, so anyway, so I tweeted out, think bounce coming. Uh, I played a small, small call position here. Uh, worked out pretty well. I mean, it literally, as a tweet came out, boom, you get this nice explosion here. Uh, what is this? You know, I mean, you can go down to the second, but one one percent, which is pretty big deal on spy. You know, I mean, one percent move <clears throat> with zero DTE options, you can uh, you can do do pretty well on on a one percenter. You know, okay. All right, we're on the one second chart. Let's see how far away from the bottom we got. Yeah, so, you know, I mean, it wasn't perfect. You know, a few seconds late from the bottom, but, you know, you had another entry opportunity there. So, anyway, <clears throat> so we did a nice little scalp there. Uh, let's see. Then I tweeted this, which was breakdown coming for Spy. All right. Boom. Then you obviously had your big breakdown. Now, this is where things started to get weird, okay? Um, let's see, let's see. Oh, wait, I think I did one more call. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but, but don't worry about that. It's not, it wasn't a, it was a little scalp, and then it kept going down. So here, I said... So depressing. Looking for calls at around 428.5-ish. Props started averaging in around 430. So then we went through the uh, process here. Um, I said, think dump 428.5 imminent here. You know, and obviously we had the big slide come right after that. And then here, dude, this is, this is where it really gets painful. Uh... Out of spy puts all calls because I was strangling the other side because uh, I knew that it could keep dropping, so I was just protecting myself against that. Um, all calls. So I did this too early, okay? And the reason that I did this was because I was following this as a falling wedge, which I've been tweeting about a lot lately, by the way, uh, saying, hey, you know, 
you really only need one pattern uh, for, for spying. I, and when I tweeted this out, I would have said it like here. And I was seeing this as like a breakdown out of the bottom of this thing that was going to end up being a fake out, but it continued down. And I just want to talk about why. Because what ended up happening was uh, I said that I was going to exit if we went down below 428, and I did. And then obviously we had this big explosion up afterwards. And I had empty hands on that. Uh, so I took a loss on the play. But how can I have prevented myself from taking the loss, right? Well, you know, I mean, it, it is a tough one. You know, we broke out of the bottom of the wedge. Uh, some people were saying, you know, oh, dude, Biden pushed his speech back and smoked you, you know, which which could be true. <laughs> it could have been like they pushed the speech back for that sort of like uh, that sort of fake out for bulls. And uh, by the way, shout out to not Guru Gruden on Twitter. I saw that he actually nailed the bottom on this thing. Uh, but what ended up happening was this ended up being the wedge. And once you broke this downtrend and came back and retested it, then you had your your explosion up. And this was going to be a longer dated one. What I what I'll say is, you know, if you have your conviction, look, I had a plan, right? And and once once my plan got invalidated, I said I'm getting out. Right? You know, once we broke below 428, I was like, I you know, no more. Uh, cause I'd been averaging in and obviously I would have won the trade big time if I would have held. Um, but because my plan got broken, I, I got out and sometimes, you know, that doesn't, it doesn't always play out the way that you, you think it's going to play out. But I think that overall it's a learning lesson. It's a lesson for me because what I could have been doing instead is, Hey, um, does this invalidate any reversal pattern? Does this invalidate any reversal like falling wedge pattern? Now, obviously, it could continue to dump down out of here, right? And we missed out because we exited at 428, right? We would have exited right around here. <clears throat> Whenever that happened, initially, it was a good idea, right? Because you still had this big dump continue. Um, but obviously, and you obviously would have had to you know, hold through all of this, hold through the break even, whatever. Um, but I just saw it, you know, overall, uh, I just wanted to show people like, you know, we do a good job of seeing what direction the market is going on a day-to-day -day basis, but we can't be perfect, you know. Uh, sometimes you you miss um, and, and you get something wrong. That's why you have to have a plan, a strategy, a stop loss, so you don't sit in a trade and lose everything that you have in it, Um you know, your, your risk is, is much lower if you, if you have a plan like that. And sometimes you just got to take the L, you know? So, uh, overall looking at spy, obviously we have everything going on with Russia, everything like that. I'm considering like, I'm not, I'm, I, I don't care about the news and stuff. I don't really pay attention to that. I only care about, uh, the market's reaction to it, the sentiment surrounding the event, um, which is all in the technicals for me. So I don't, I don't really feel the need to like pay attention to the news on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, usually news comes out. It's very technical whenever it does, but I see spy in this larger falling wedge, which is going to end up being a reversal pattern. Um, in my opinion to the upside, but it's going to, it's going to require some bleeding, right? So like tomorrow we could pop up to 440 and then we could come back down, retest these lows at like 425. I'm back up to 432, go down below 425, boom. We could go all the way down. I mean, the end of this wedge is like 410. And look, these things will do that, especially in a dramatic market like we're in right now. It would only make sense to come in and make a lower low, right? So um, that's, that's basically how I'm seeing SPY. I'm going to be playing either side of this thing throughout the process, but I do think that eventually... Uh, maybe once you get down to this 410 range, maybe you'll have one big sell-off to freak everybody out down to 400 or something before you reverse up. But I do think that you will see new highs for SPY um, sometime after that. Um, and we're targeting kind of like just below 500, around that 490 range. Um, I'm only talking about that in an AMC video because I feel like it's very important to be paying attention to indexes uh, when you're in this trade right now, especially at this time for AMC, just because... AMC really, you know, is at a deciding moment where we're trying to figure out, hey, is this the final kind of consolidation before we start to create a new bull trend where you, where you have a process of higher highs and higher lows, right? Um, this trend line is a trend line that we haven't moved. It's been sticking on the chart since we established this uptrend probably two weeks ago. Let's take a look. 
yeah, off of this bounce on January 28th, so actually almost a month ago now, three weeks ago. Uh, we haven't moved it. It bounced. We had the big, the big move up to $21 and some change, or maybe just under $21 um, off of it, and now it looks like we're curling back to come back for a retest. So what does that mean? Um, I mean, you know, this is actually something that we, we talked about on the channel, the possibility of us going back into the 16 to $17 range. We were doing that based on the Fibonacci's, uh, for this one, 1673 is the 0.5 Fibonacci. Um, and then your golden pocket is down here from 1564 to 1587. So look, I mean, with the turmoil in the general market, I would not be surprised at all to see SPY continue and crawl down this this lower trend line before it pops back up you know this is just an example of how it might play out but you you know until something gets resolved with this russia ukraine thing the narrative is going to be hey stick to the bottom of this thing maybe you pop up have a bull trap and then you sent, get sent further down anything like that could happen you gotta expect the worst here okay um and i would say that also, because AMC likes 786 so much, what you could also see is a further continuation to the 786, 1471, right? As your final bottom, you break below this longer term trend line, which by the way, does have some, some relevance back here. You have a tap of this trend line back here on April 12th, 2021. Uh, so this is a very relevant trend line. Also, obviously we're coming off of the 1450 uh, bottom, which actually bottomed out at 1350, but that was that was our call. We closed above 1450 uh, way back in the day. Now it seems. So overall, I feel pretty good about where AMC is on the on the more macro scale. Uh, it would make sense for you to come down and retest this trend line. And by the way, dude, like when whenever I was saying this, whenever we were up at like 20, 21 dollars, we that we would come down to the 16, 17 dollar range. Everybody's like, AMC's at 100% utilization and, you know, blah, blah, blah. You're a shill if you're not calling for more upside or whatever. And look at where we are now, right? The the thing is, it's just reality, man. Like, you have to come back and test liquidity zones. You have to come back and, and deal with the prices that you just blast through. That's just the reality of the market, right? And so I'd rather blast through... And then come back and retest them now, then blast through them, and then get all the way up to forty dollars before we have to come back and do our retest. Then, right? So, um, that's not to say that I don't want the stock to go up, but I just want it to go up in a healthy manner. And I think right now AMC is in a relatively healthy place if you consider everything else that's going on, right? So that's pretty much where I stand. Uh, nothing too crazy is going on. We definitely want to see AMC hold this orange trend line. Again, you can draw it from the bottom of January 24th, um, and there's a tap of it on January 27th, and then just extend the lines left and right. Uh, we also have this key liquidity zone from $12 all the way up to $14.50, um, which was basically the last support and resistance before the blast off in June. So that's definitely a key zone to be watching. We want to hold. Hopefully, we never go back down there and we just tap 1470 or something and then bounce back up uh, for our for our bullish continuation. That's what I'm looking for on AMC. Um, I'm really full right now, so that's why I sound like I'm out of breath if I do at all. Definitely feel out of breath. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so anyway, uh, free Discord link down below. Uh, you can go join the free Discord. I don't have a paid version or anything. I'm not going to like try and sell you a paid version when you get there. It's just a community of people who love charts, love to look at technicals on, uh, on you know, AMC as well as other assets. We look a lot at SPY down there. Um, you can also follow me on Twitter. That's where I post like what I'm looking at as far as SPY. Been having a lot of fun with SPY lately. Uh, a lot of success as well. Um, today, we had a bad, we had a, uh, a bad break. Uh, but that's why we position ourselves in a way where we're not going to lose and then be like, oh, no, and, you know, it's the end of the world or whatever. We lose. Uh, we pick ourselves up, go to the gym, and free our mind or something so that we aren't so mad at ourselves, you know? Because I just don't like losing. That's that's my main thing. I'm just a competitive guy, you know? So, um, And then, you know, come back tomorrow, and we'll we'll do it again. I'm having a lot of fun with it, though. So make sure you follow me over there. Join the Discord. And uh, that's going to be the end of the video.
oh, dude, I have to sing a song because now I sing a song at the end of every video. Holy shit. Uh, oh, damn. The sing, dude. See, look, like, I, I was just like, oh, I've been talking shit about Eminem or whatever. You can't sing any Eminem songs. Eminem songs are, like, whack as shit to sing. Uh, see, see what I'm talking about, dude? But if I wanted to sing some Kanye, I mean, that would be... But when it all, it all falls down... I mean, I guess, I guess that's not Kanye singing, right? So you could do the same... You, you could be like, love the way you lie. Just gonna stand there... Watch me cry. But like, let's be honest though, you know, Kanye hooks are much easier to sing along with. You know? I, I go for mine. I got to shine. I throw your hands up. And All right. <laughs> you guys have a good rest of your day and uh, I'll see you tomorrow. Peace.